Hi, how you doing? It's Mitch from Hard Intentions YouTube channel. We also have hardintentions.com where we sell shirts and other stuff. Uh, please check us out. Um, yeah, the other day I was at a friend's pad uh, down in Arizona and I got some photographs from a uh, motorcycle show at, uh, at the prison in Tracy, California, DVI, dual vocational institution that uh, I remember being in Preston at the time. I was in Youth Authority in 77. I got an Easy Rider magazine. They did a spread on the, uh, on the bike show. And it was put on by a motorcycle club for the guys in prison. Um, they actually had uh, the motorcycle club ride up to the prison processed uh, all the guys through that were allowed to go in with their motorcycles uh, they had a band on the yard i think it was an inmate band i think bobby boozley actually was uh playing in that band it was his band <clears throat> and uh they had a motorcycle show rock and roll music on the yard uh guys were allowed to uh mingle with the guys that came in uh sit on the motorcycles on some occasions, take photographs with guys with their patch, you know, holding their patch, guys from prison, guys from the streets all mingling together. And uh, I thought I'd share those photographs with you, but um, that was not just, uh... oh, and later on those motorcycle shows uh, had actually taken place at San Quentin around the same time, a different motorcycle club started doing them. And then the, the same motorcycle club that did them at Tracy did a couple at San Quentin. And I think the last one they had was 1983. Um, and then when I was there in 2000s, the cops would come in with their motorcycles and, and show uh, and their bikes, you know, on Veterans Day. And, and so someone goes, that's pretty cool. They come in here like that. I go, man, the dudes are all cops. I go, oh, wow, you know. But so these motorcycle shows that went on in the 70s and early 80s in prison, um, especially the one at Tracy, I think there was more going on there than just, uh, you know, let's ride our motorcycles up to the prison and, and show and show our bikes to the guys, you know. Um, number one, there were guys in that prison from that motorcycle club that had life sentences. And, uh, you know, they were showing the love they had for their their brother, uh, their brothers, you know, that were in that prison. And uh, also they were showing love to to the guys in the prison. That well, There were other guys in there that were bikers that weren't part of that motorcycle club. They were just bikers. And, it, and they were showing love to those guys. That was, uh, they were showing their unity and their strength and their love, uh, you know, for guys that were in prison, um, you know, that were part of that lifestyle. That, that they were, uh, oops, that, that they were part of it, you know? And uh, so they were going up there to yeah, and tell her to understand what I'm talking about. Um, there was a lot of stuff going on there. There was a lot of violence in that prison. Um, show them the violence uh, was just, uh, you know, beyond what you would imagine today. You know, the newer prisons have a little bit of violence, but not like in the 70s and early 80s. Um, you know, the violence was like this. Tracy has a corridor. It's a main corridor. It goes to the housing units. It goes down to education. Then it splits off. It goes down to chow halls. And then they have the chapels and they have yard. And they have a gym. And so anywhere you go in that prison, you're in a hallway to get outside or to get to education or vocation area, whatever. Even education is inside. Plan operations, all that, that's outside. So it was uh, mostly a prison for first termers, young guys. My friends were in their early 20s when they got there. Um, it was kind of headquarters for... Uh, uh, a prison gang, a Chicano prison gang, mostly guys from up north. There were guys in this gang from San Diego, 
Uh, there was a guy, Sammy, a white dude, actually, who was hooked up with him from San Diego. That I remember uh, when I was in the county jail, guys were trying to get their hands on him uh, to kill him. He was all tattooed back, looked like a rag, you know, but he was actually hooked up with this uh, northern prison gang, you know, mostly northerners. Uh, and so uh, they were kind of teamed up with a black prison gang and against uh, whites and the Southern Mexican prison gang um, that was predominantly Southern Mexicans. Um, and so white dudes were kind of looked at as a threat to them. And so if you came into that prison and you had previous prison term, you had any tattoos that said you were about something, they would try to kill you. Um, I had a friend that was there, got stabbed five times in one year, uh, put him right back in the same cell, same housing unit they got stabbed in. Um, until he got transferred to San Quentin. Um, it was ugly, you know. Uh, and so the white dudes that got sent there predominantly didn't really have any past prison record. So they couldn't, you know, put their finger on it and say, oh, this guy was in San Quentin, so he might be affiliated with these guys or those guys. Um, but, you know, white dudes had it rough there. They were a minority and uh, they were victimized, you know? And so this bike show that went on there, I think was a show of strength. Like, hey, um, we have friends, you know, on the outside world that love us and look out for us. And the guys on the outside, that was their way of saying, hey, we're there for you guys on the inside. Um, you know, they had, uh, you know, they had guys that would that would that were stand up dudes, and these guys would follow their visitors out of the visiting room and, and kill their visitors. Well, that's how serious it was. They had guys, man, that would uh, uh, they would stab you in the fucking hallway in front of God and everybody, and you know when they were done, they would just walk over to the door, a K wing, which was the hole, and and you know because they knew they were going to the hole, they didn't give a fuck. Um, they're very militant. Um, so white dudes had it pretty bad. And others, you know, like guys from Southern California, the Chicanos, they had it pretty bad unless they wanted to hook up with these guys. Um, you know, so the bike show was, uh, you know, it was a thing. It, was, it showed love, showed unity. Um, and eventually, you know, the guys who... Uh, who did the baseball bat thing, they were predominantly bikers too. Um, I know a few of them. And uh, I know some of the guys that helped put that together and uh, that were participating in it. And uh, they were bikers. And then that led to, uh, <clears throat> that led to fire bombings while they were locked down. And it led to the removal of that, that prison gang off that main line. And, uh, you know, that was the end of that era. Um, you know, then some of those white dudes went to San Quentin after that. They had bike shows in San Quentin. If you look in uh, 1976, 75, they had an easy rider uh, with a bike show in San Quentin with a bike club. Um, same thing, showing strength and unity and love for their, for their guys in the joint. So that's what, to me, that's the shit I grew up around. That's the stuff I was taught as a kid, you know, um, it, you call somebody your brother, uh, doesn't mean, hey, homie, you know, it means, what's up, brother? It means you're going to be there for them when you can. You're going to do what you can for them when they need you. It means they're going to be there for you. And back then, you know, it was a mean time in prison. And, uh, you know, it, 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 was, it meant something. It meant a lot. Um, I'm not to say that prison isn't mean now, but it was a lot meaner. It was a lot rougher and a lot tougher and a lot deadlier. And so when I went to the joint, some of these same guys were involved in this shit before I was, I was impressed in some of the stuff was going on youth authority, but they were there. I got there. Some of these guys uh, schooled me on how to live in prison, you know, which uh, I credit my, uh, my freedom to right now to this day. You know, some of the values I grew up with on the streets from uh, guys that were in motorcycle scene, whether they were just bikers or just or bikers in a club, whatever. Some of the values that they imparted upon me 
uh, were reinforced by guys, same kind of guys that were imprisoned. And uh, so I credit myself being free right now today to the fact that uh, I was schooled by these guys as a youngster on how to live in there, you know, Um, because the alternative is, you know, uh, sitting around the yard, uh, acting like uh, what goes on inside the prison is more important than anything else in life. And, you know, uh, shooting dope and, and, uh, you know, taking inventory on the next motherfucker on the yard, uh, is, is what's, what's happening. And that's what is what's happening for a lot of guys. So I kind of separated myself from all that shit. And, uh, you know, these guys went through the shit, man. And they had unity and structure for amongst each other. Um, and, uh, you know, don't think that just cause they're bikers, they didn't step up with the other, other guys, uh, when need be because they did. And that's, uh, what the baseball bat incident was all about. They had enough and, uh, rather than be victimized, uh, they stood up and because of that, uh, it made life easier uh, for the white dudes in that prison. Um, later on, um, you know, I got, I got to Tracy in 1989, but, uh, during the eighties, you know, because of what happened in the late seventies there, um, it was a lot easier place to be if you're a white and if you're a South sider, um, and you know, things are different now in prison. Um, you know, back then, uh, you know, the prison guards and the staff, they didn't know how to really deal with prison gangs. They would lock guys up for a little while and let them out. And then, you know, it wasn't until, you know, the mid eighties, they decided to give everybody indeterminate shoot term. They built Pelican Bay and all that shit and locked everyone up for 30 fucking years. So, you know, if you were in a prison that was uh, predominantly of a certain group of people, man, and they were against you, you had it rough. I mean, they were stabbing guys in the hallway. Um, like I said, they would kill your visitors, all that shit. And so the bike shows, was kind of a reprieve from that for a day. You could go out to the yard and see guys from the street that were coming in saying, hey, we got love for you. We got you. Um, you know, even if you weren't part of their club, that's kind of the message. Hey, we're out here in the world. Don't lose hope. Uh, you know, and that's kind of uh, that's a rare thing, especially nowadays. Um, the last bike show that I remember was 1983, and um, that was it. You know, they had music, they had dancers, they had motorcycles. Uh, you know, guys could congregate on the yard and talk with their brothers from the street. Uh, some guys would make new friends. It was a big deal, man. You think about that. It, it, the staff let these guys go in there. And they had to be approved by the warden everybody and these guys wore their patches into the into the prison rode their motorcycles onto the yard it was a big deal it took a lot to organize it and make it happen but they did it and uh the guys came in from the streets willingly and gladly and enjoyed themselves and the guys that were inside the prison um man just imagine you know so later on in life you know when i when i was in san quentin uh you know, the cops did the bike show on Veterans Day when I was there. And I was just like, dude, they're rubbing it in our face. Look at our motorcycles. Look what we got. So they were basically saying, we got what you used to have. That's what they were doing. They weren't in there, you know, like, hey, look at these nice bikes. You know, keep the faith. Keep hope alive. We got your back. All that was out the window. It was now it was the cops rubbing it in your face. Look at our motorcycles. Look at the lifestyle we live. Because we make, you know, $100,000 a year as prison guard. Thanks a lot, dummy. That was the message I got when they brought their bikes in. Um, you know, they don't like motorcycle clubs. They don't like, uh, they don't like uh, you know, neighborhood, uh, what they refer to as gangs, whatever. If they're gangs or not, like, you know, guys that live in neighborhoods in L.A. and all over California and all over the country. That, that are unified in motorcycle clubs, especially they get profiled. Like you would not believe worse than racial profiling. They don't like it. And uh, the reason they don't like it 
is because guys that are in bike clubs and guys that are not in bike clubs, but they're bikers, they're still kind of outlaw mentality. They ride motorcycles. They live by the same code as guys in bike clubs. Um, the government doesn't like us because we don't buy their bullshit. We don't buy Russia as the cause of uh, uh, extreme gas prices or food shortages or no baby formula. We don't buy that shit. We don't buy these rules and regulations that they throw out here in society. And a lot of times guys don't abide by them because they're bullshit. Um, you know, our founding fathers were like, hey, you know, when there's unjust laws, you're not supposed to abide by them. You're supposed to challenge them. And most of society, um, they won't challenge shit. They won't even question it. They'll just uh, say like they took our family visits in prison. Guys, go, oh, that doesn't affect me. It's the same thing out here on the streets when they come up with some bullshit rule or, or they, or they, or they persecute somebody because some guy got their feelings hurt or a group of feeling uh, people get their feelings hurt by another group of people. They'll, they'll say, well, that's against the law. You know, you can't do that. Well, bikers, especially um, they challenge that. They don't, they don't agree with that and, and they don't live by that bullshit. So that's why they don't like us. You know, they don't dig us. Um, you know, there's a need for some kind of government regulations. In some cases, uh, you know, just like there's a need for unions and there's a need for everything else. You know, the cops are there to protect women, children, and old people. And, you know, government's there to control certain shit, make sure things don't get out of control. Uh, you know, we have a military to protect our country and all that. But now we have a group of people running the country that are fucking out of control. And guys like us challenge it. Guys like us don't accept it. We don't like it. And that's why they don't like us. And that's why they kick in clubhouse doors. That's why they try to say, you know, that motorcycle is getting impounded for X reason. You know, it's harassment. And it's harassment for a reason. They try to dissuade people from joining these organizations and motorcycle clubs. And, and look, it doesn't mean murder crew like the Sons of Anarchy. It means motorcycle club. Guys that love to ride motorcycles and they got each other's backs. Um, you know, the government don't dig it. And, and that's why they, uh, you know, demonize us and put that stigma on you. You know, they're filthy bikers, you know, and, uh, Back in the day, some of us might have been kind of filthy, but uh, only on the outside, not in the heart. So when you see these photographs, you just think of what it would have been like, you know, to be sitting around a prison cell with guys stabbing and killing each other on a daily basis. Um, you know, wondering, you know, when you when you get up in the morning and you go to work, you know, some fucking bozo going to try to stick a knife in your back. Are you going to make it through the day? And then when you get to your cell at the end of the day and the bar drops and your door's locked and you <sighs> breathe a sigh of relief because you made it through another day, right? Just imagine that. And then imagine a group of guys coming in on their motorcycles and, and spreading some love, you know? And uh, yeah, it was really something, man. And it's something that doesn't happen anymore because they don't allow it. Uh, guys in prison now, they, they're not going to see things that we used to see because they don't allow it anymore. You know, they have control. And uh, they say that CDC is the big homie now. So back then they weren't and they knew it. So whatever you do, man, just know this. If you have a few guys in your crew, you know, even if it's four or five guys and you all have your back, right? You're lucky. You know, you're lucky. Take care. Get out there and do it hard.